get ready for a huge 700 Club. Presidential hopeful and GOP juggernaut Donald Trump sits down with Pat Robertson. Plus, a mother in constant pain. I would sometimes have to forego even playing with my son. And nothing offered relief. I couldn't sleep. How she got her ultimate gift. He is definitely my healer. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Man, we had a time yesterday. The clear front runner for the Republican presidential nomination came to Regent University. Donald Trump made his views clear on several key issues during his visit, including government spending, President Obama's executive orders, and what uh, he wants in a Supreme Court justice. Trump told the audience that evangelicals played a major role in his big win in Nevada caucuses. Heather Sells has this look at Trump's visit just six days before the Super Tuesday primaries next week. Donald Trump arrived at Regent University walking and talking like the Thank front you, runner that Thank he you, is and giving credit to people of faith for supporting him in Nevada. Thank you very much. One of the things that made me so happy is we, we as you saw, we totally won with evangelicals. I mean, we were big league with evangelicals, and uh, it, was, uh, it was such a good thing. He was also and quick to tout his family. Uh, Sons Donald Jr. and Eric joined him on stage to give their personal endorsements. We know what he feels about this country. We know the values that he's instilled in us growing up. Education, family, work ethic. All of these things that are often lost on children of similar fortune. You don't read about many children that came from the kind of wealth that we were able to brought up with in the way that you perhaps read about us. And I won't talk about myself that way, but I'll talk about my brother and sister that way. So those are all things that he doesn't get credit for. Those are the things that you don't see. Those are the things you don't see when he's a father, when he's now a grandfather to my five children. Uh, it's really incredible. He likes to talk about business and he's phenomenal at that. But if you knew the real Donald, you'd also see something really special. He's an incredible guy, and we're just thankful that he's doing this for not only ourselves, our children, behind them, uh, but for everyone in this country, because he'll do a phenomenal job. He has been our best friend. He's been our mentor. Uh, he's just the absolute greatest. We've worked cross table with him for the last 10 years, building hotels and golf courses and everything all over the world. And uh, you know, everything he touches turns to gold. I say that all the time, but everything he touches turns to gold. And you know, that's the touch that this country needs. It, it really is. But Trump told the audience that business success pales in comparison to success so at home. Say, you know, the really successful people are the people not with the great wealth, but with the great families, where they have great kids and wives and husbands. And those are the people that are the happiest. And I don't know if I'm speaking against myself here, but the fact is that, you know, you can have, I know the most successful people in the world. I deal with them all the time. I know them. I know I know him in many cases very well. These are not the happiest people, generally. A couple of happy, not too many. Because, you know, no matter how successful, they all want more, more, more. It's never satisfied. And I guess I get a little bit guilty of that also. But the fact is that the happiest people I know are the people with great families that love their families and when their families love them. <laughs> we have amazing people in this country. And one of the most amazing people in the whole country is our great friend, Pat. Will you come out here, Pat? Look at him. One of the great people. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Pat. Oh, nice, Thank you. Man, it's good to have you here with us. Thank you. It's great you to be here. You inspire us all. Great Robertson's good, first good. question, dealing with the Obama legacy of executive orders. There's a little office underneath the Capitol where you could go to, and by the stroke of the pen, you could cancel a great many of the executive orders of your right. predecessor. You don't need Congress. You can, executive order, you can do whatever. What would you do? Well, I would do that. We expect to cancel many of the executive orders that were passed because, you know, Obama has not been able to run things the way you're supposed to run them. So one of the first ones I'd knock out is his executive order on the Second Amendment, where he's chipping away at it, which is so important, the Second mm -hmm. Amendment. And the other one would be the one on the border, where basically he wants people to pour into the country unchecked. And the courts have been, you know, following that one. And 
Amazingly, we had a couple of pretty good decisions so far, mm -hmm. but it's still out there. So I'd, I'd save the legal fees, frankly. I'd get rid of it. I'd knock it out very fast. But because we do have to, and I know you believe in this, you have to have strong borders. If we don't have strong borders, you saw the Pope came out against me a little bit, but that was before he you knew. He was very nice because the next day he issued a statement. Well, he realized he had a pretty big wall around the Vatican, and so we did. <laughs> next up, the federal deficit. We've got a massive uh, deficit, and we're running a deficit every year, and the wasteful spending is out of control. Uh, there was a commission, uh, Senator Simpson and uh, Erskine Bowles got together and gave a very reasoned proposal. Uh, have you adopted anything like that? We've got to have some way of cutting the spending down. What, what yeah. are you going to do? Other than, and, and I think I could add to it a lot, though, because I'm going to bring jobs back to the country. But yeah. Our country has been stripped. We've rebuilt China. And again, I like China. I think China is wonderful. I'm not angry at China. I'm angry at our representatives, our people, our president for doing such bad deals. And not just Obama. This goes back. You know, this isn't just now. But Obama has been horrible, and, and others have been also. And so I'm not upset with China. I have them as tenants in my bank. I have the biggest bank in the world as a tenant in one of my buildings in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I sell millions and millions of dollars worth of condominiums to the Chinese. So I can't be angry at them. Same thing with Mexico. I mean, I have great relationships with Mexico. Problem is, in both cases, but really in all cases, all countries, every country is killing us because mm -hmm. we have people that are political hacks that are negotiating trade deals. They know nothing about it. And they have the smartest, sharpest people that they pick out when they're practically three years old. You understand that? Yeah. They go up this pyramid chain, and they pick them out very early. And our people cannot deal with it, because we're not using our And we have the greatest business people in the world. We don't use them. And yet our tax burden on corporations is probably the highest in the world. What are you going to do with them? So we have the highest taxes in the world, the United States. Think of it, with deficits like this, and yet we have high taxes. Uh -huh. I'm cutting taxes very substantially for businesses. We're going to bring businesses back. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're going to make sure that, you know, look, China is one of the great money mani currency manipulators in history, ever, <laughs> ever. There's nobody ever like this. Japan is really good, but China is even better. And they have done a number on us with, uh, with manipulation, with devaluations. In fact, our dollar goes up, and everyone says, oh, isn't that wonderful? In the meantime, look at Caterpillar. They can't sell the tractor. Mm. It's, it's a very bad situation going on. So, and they have no fear of us. They have no respect for us anymore. In the South China Sea, just before I left, I was watching where they're building this massive, massive military complex in the middle of the South China Sea. They're not supposed to be doing it. But they're doing it because they don't respect our president. They don't. I mean, he gives them state dinners when they come over, but he has no re they have no respect. And we have a lot of power over China. We just don't know it. We have people that don't know it. The power is straight. We've rebuilt them. They are taking so much money out of our country. What they've done, and I say it, it's the greatest robbery in the history of the world, what they've done. We've rebuilt China. You just take a look. We have rebuilt. They've taken so much money out. And we have to stop it. And we have to use our power, because we have a lot of power because of trade. We have to stop it. And we can get them to do things like they have to solve the North Korea problem. We have a North Korea problem that you probably know better than I do, because I know that's also a part of the world that you look at that's very right. But we have a big problem. You know they don't exist without China. But China pats us, well, we don't have that kind of control. They're just toying with us. They have total control over him. Trump, no known for the New York Times so bestseller we... The Art of the Deal, repeatedly touted his ability to negotiate. He told the audience how he would outsmart foreign competitors. Do, do you know, Pat, that the politicians talk about free trade? I'm a free trader. Mm -hmm. But you got to have smart trade, too. You don't have to have intelligent trade. Yeah, yeah. And I say there'll be a tax. Like Kerry, I was just saying, Kerry is moving over to Mexico. They're going to make air conditions. They're going to sell them to us. No tax, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So we lose 1,400 jobs. They move to Mexico. They build a plant. They employ Mexican people, which is fine. They make air conditions. They sell them. I would tell them, here's the story, folks. Here's this, and this is the only thing you can do to stop it, I mean, in all fairness. Here's the story. You're going to make air conditions. We wish you a lot of luck. I hope you build a nice plant. Enjoy yourselves. But every time you put an air conditioner into this country, you send an air conditioner, you're going to have a 35% tax. They're not going to move. They're not moving. Because you have to do it. That's called... <laughs> now, now, Pat, there are people that would say, oh, you're not a conservative. Well, I'm the most conservative guy in many ways, but you have to be smart. 
The death of Supreme Court Justice Scalia also took center stage. Trump said conservative principles will guide him in nominating anyone to the high bench. Uh, Scalia just died. He was a dear friend here at Region, a dear friend of all of us, and uh, a great justice. In your selection as president, uh, what criteria would you use to pick somebody? Pro-life. Pro uh, we want, we want. <laughs> Starts with that. Starts with that. A, a very conservative, very, very smart. I mean, like Judge Scalia would be a perfect, you know, that's, he was like a perfect, he was a perfect uh, representative. I, I've always said that uh, Justice Thomas doesn't get enough credit. Uh, he's a wonderful man. He is. He's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. And I've always said, and as I said, uh, Judge Alito is, is a terrific guy. So um, in that realm is what we're talking about for me. David Brody, chief political correspondent for CBN News, moderated the event and included questions from the audience. Will you emphatically stand with Israel? Yes. Is the question. Very simple answer. Yes. <laughs> they've, they've been our most reliable ally, especially in the Middle East. And you look at you know, what's happened with Israel, they were so against this horrible Iran deal. They were so against it. And I tell you what, Obama was the worst thing that's ever happened to Israel. You can look at it as he's not a good president and he's not doing a good job. And you look at uh, Bibi Netanyahu, you look at what he has gone through. I mean, you could just see the level of exasperation on that man's face, how they just, mm -hmm. the most basic things, they weren't winning anything. Why did we make a deal like this with these people? And they look at us like they have no respect for us whatsoever. They can't believe themselves that they were able to get this deal. I don't get it. I mean, I don't get it. There are a lot of theories out there, but I don't get it. This will be studied and studied for a long time. And this will prove to be a very bad deal. This will lead to nuclear proliferation 100 percent. Next question. James wants to know about the Constitution. As president, what will you do to restore adherence to the Constitution by all levels of government. Well, I'm a very strong constitutionalist. I mean, I feel so strongly about it. And we've gotten away. I mean, frankly, I think you could say it, not giving it a lot of thought, but all these executive orders, that's not a constitutional thing. And nobody ever saw this. I mean, right, uh, Lexi from the audience right here, Mr. Trump, there are some who say that in the past you have supported Democrat and liberal views. How can voters be sure that you will truly hold and would actually continue to uphold Republican ideas yeah. and values. The fact is that as a businessman, you get along with all politicians or you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So I get along with Democrats. I get along with liberals and conservatives and Republicans. I get along with everybody All right, because that was my thing. You know, it was very important. Rounding out the forum, Robertson asked a final question wondering how Trump would handle the ongoing federal probe into Hillary Clinton's emails on her private server. Hillary, if you were president, would you instruct the attorney general to indict her for what she's done in relation to the emails? Well, it's an amazing question because, you know, there's a six-year statute of limitations. <laughs> Might be five, but probably six. And the answer is I would have... I would instruct them to take a look at it, you know, because yeah. it's not really our call to say indict. Yeah. But certainly you would have to take a look at it. There seems to be a lot there because, you know, every day we see people and we read about people that are experts in the field. And they're, how often you see somebody saying she did nothing wrong? Yeah. They're all saying she did something very wrong. That's right. But they're protecting her because she's the number one runner and she's saying how wonderful Obama is. Did you ever see anything like it? Every single thing that he wants to do, she's saying great. So she's doing it for that reason. Believe me, folks. Well, Donald, I want to thank you. I think the audience really appreciates and loves you. They appreciate you being here. And, uh, well, it was quite an appearance. We had 45,000 people online uh, on that. And uh, you can watch Donald Trump's full appearance at Regent University on CBNNews.com. Now, Friday night, tomorrow night, Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz is going to be joining us for another Regent Forum. And we'll have highlights of that interview Monday on the 700 Club. And again, you can watch it online at, at uh, Friday night. It's I think it's uh, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. yeah, East Coast time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ted exactly. Cruz. Right.
Wonderful. Well, we're yes. getting them all here, and I think it's interesting. Were well, you interested? You? I, I was fascinated by it. I, and we had the crowd at the School of Communications, and then an overflow crowd in the chapel, and so yeah. lots of people wanting to and hear what he said. 45,000 online. Online. Watching. Amazing. Yeah, so it, 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 uh, he, he's a big draw, and unless in this Super Tuesday coming up, somebody throws a roadblock and it doesn't look like anybody is, he's going to, he's going to, as he said run, uh, once, run the table. I mean, it's just a pool turtle. He'll run the table. I mean, they'll all be, I mean, there's nobody can stand against him. He, he, he's leading Rubio in Florida. I don't know if he's leading Cruz in Texas, but he's close. And these other states, he's actually leading John Kasich in Ohio. You just yeah. can't believe it. But it, it's, it's happening, and <laughs> the American people are responding. Terry? Well, up next, a killer storm ripped through parts of Virginia, leaving four people dead in its wake. More on that when we come back. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A violent winter storm that hammered millions of Americans for several days left a trail of death yesterday. The severe storm unleashed dozens of tornadoes from Louisiana to Virginia. Dale Hurd has the story. This time lapse shows the storm moving into Charlotte, North Carolina. Strong winds throwing trees into homes, cars, and power lines. The storm killed four in Virginia and took out power to 160,000 people in four states. It was a beautiful, windy morning after in Virginia, but a state of emergency declared by the governor remained in effect. After twisters shredded and tossed homes and left thousands without power. In the small town of Waverly, southeast of Richmond, complete and utter devastation, three dead, including a child. One thing we heard is was a two-year-old baby was found in the woods. That baby and two men, all related, were pronounced dead. This is devastating. Several buildings wiped out. What's there now is nothing there now but boards that's been destroyed. Across several states, more than 30 tornadoes in the last day alone first tearing across Louisiana and destroying this RV park. God, let us be okay. Let us get through this. Torrential rains flooded the mid-Atlantic to the northeast. Downpours led to flash floods, washing away cars and creating a mess for the D.C. area. I think in like, okay, I would drive, I would be there. I just call God to help me. I just oh, I pray. In New York, heavy winds overturned this truck on the George Washington Bridge. And on the backside of this massive storm, blizzard conditions across the Midwest. If you don't need to make the trip, don't make the trip today. In parts of Illinois and Indiana near whiteout conditions, making travel extra difficult. Dale Hurd, CBN News. What a night. Thanks, Dale. In other news, a federal appeals court has upheld a Louisiana law that's meant to protect the health of women who have abortions. The law requires doctors at Louisiana abortion clinics to have admitting privileges at hospitals within 30 miles. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed a lower court ruling that said the law violates women's rights. Opponents say the law makes it hard for women to get abortions, but Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry defends the law, saying anyone who has outpatient surgery would expect her doctor to admit her to a hospital in the event of complications. Women seeking abortions should have the same assurance of prompt care. The House Judiciary Committee has approved leg legislation calling on the State Department to label the Muslim Brotherhood a foreign terrorist organization. Lawmakers voted along party lines. Republicans supported the measure. Democrats opposed it. Supporters say if it's signed into law, the U.S. would deny admittance to people who are tied to the Brotherhood but aren't U.S. citizens. The bill would allow the Treasury Department to require U.S. banks and financial institutions to block transactions held by the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood says it's a peaceful, charitable, and political group, but Saudi Arabia and Egypt consider it a terrorist organization. Pat, who's telling the truth? Well, of course he's telling the truth. I've, I've been um, talking about this for some time. The Brotherhood sponsored Hamas. Hamas grew out of the Brotherhood. The Palestine Liberation Organization, a terrorist group, came out of the Brotherhood. Hezbollah came out of the Brotherhood. They are dedicated to the establishment of Sharia law. They're dedicating to establishing a caliphate. Uh, 
we talk about ISIS being so terrible. Well, the Brotherhood has pretty much the same goals. They just don't cut the heads of people off. But I think for that House Judiciary Committee, it's a bold step. And the fact that the Democrats would vote against it, it says something. What is wrong with these people? And you know, Al-Sisi, the new head of Egypt, put down the Brotherhood. And our State Department and our Democrat president uh, uh, was against it. And we have not embraced Al-Sisi as we should have. This is a man who would be our friend. And it's long overdue, but the Muslim Brotherhood, it sounds so benign. Oh, the Brotherhood, aren't they nice brothers? It's like a fraternal organization. No, it's not. It is the root of terror. Wendy. Pat, during the Jim Crow era, African Americans in Arlington, Virginia, were not allowed to go into the drugstore to get their prescriptions. So after seeing how blacks were treated, Dr. Leonard Muse, a black man himself, opened the Green Valley Pharmacy along with his classmate, Waverly Jones, back in 1952, and it's been open ever since. John Jessup brings us this amazing story. Meet Dr. Leonard Muse. The 92-year-old pharmacist owns and operates Green Valley Pharmacy here in Arlington, Virginia, in what's known as the Nuck community. It's Arlington's oldest African-American neighborhood, dating back to the mid-1800s, when freed slaves purchased the land and built homes. Doc Muse, as he's lovingly called, opened the store back in 1952 with a classmate from Howard University buying it for $18,000. He's been at the helm just about every single day since, working from sunup till sundown, seven days a week. He's known for giving away free medicine to those who can't afford it, as well as medical advice with a helping of fatherly love. They have a lot of respect for me and my advice to them. I've tried to get a lot of them to go to school, a lot of them took time and went on to school, yeah, got an education, and I feel proud about that. When Doc Muse started his career, blacks weren't allowed to enter any of the pharmacies in Arlington. They were sent to the back door to pick up their prescriptions. Despite that, white pharmacists offered him their support. When I opened the store, all the pharmacists, white pharmacists, told us if you need anything, come to me and we'll help you. Any drug that you need, you come and get it. There was people drugstore at the time and drug fair when I came here. <clears throat> all of them have gone since. Uh, and you're still here. I'm still here. He's seen a lot throughout the years, including the rise and fall of drug use in the community. Unfortunately, the police were of little help stopping the problem. In fact, Muse says the police turned against him after he took their advice to befriend the locals. I asked the police to help me. They told me, no, we can't put a policeman down there to help you. But I tell you, you make friends with those people and you'll get along with them better. In the same time, they turned around and used my friendship with the people against me, saying that I was in cahoots with them, that I was doing the drugs, that I was doing... That's the police department. But the other people knew better, like the um, churches and the different organizations who tried to help. And the people here love, admire, and respect him. They come back and tell me how they thank me of being that part of them. He says he's thankful for God's unchanging hand. Well, I know <laughs> that he's helped me because uh, some of the things that I went through, he had to help me. Doc Muse, a living legend. John Jessup, CBN News, Arlington, Virginia. Great story, thanks John. Well, some good news from the world of health. Chocolate can help you think better. That's the finding from a new study that says that people who eat more chocolate have better cognition abilities in their brains. Chocolate contains healthy ingredients like antioxidants and flavonoids. And scientists aren't sure how much you would need to eat to get its health benefits. But, Pat, I always knew that chocolate was making me smarter. So. Probably dark chocolate. Though. I recommend it, but not the milk chocolate. Milk chocolate is full of sugar and all kinds of bad things. It's the dark chocolate and the 72 to 80 uh, percent cocoa uh, is the way to go. It's a little bit tart, and uh, some people might not like it, but that's what's good for you. And 
maybe about two or three squares a day, but it sure does, it lowers your blood pressure like crazy. It is one of the best, uh, marvelous antioxidant. It, it's, it's tremendous. Bitter, but tremendous. Well, it doesn't have to be bitter. The 72% is okay, and it tastes good. But I, you, you develop a, a, a taste for taste it. Taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. But that'll keep you healthy, Terry. I okay. want you to, all right. And thinking. Okay. <laughs> well, up next, a mom copes with 15 years of pain from a shoulder injury. I was minimizing the fact that I was in that much pain and that it really was hampering my life. And so I think I had just grown used to being in, in regular pain. See how she's healed in an instant. Plus, we're gonna be praying for you and your needs, so stay with us, we'll be right back. Burning pain in her shoulder kept Bridget Riley from doing many of the things that she'd love to do, like exercising full out and actively playing with her son. It even interfered with her sleep. As time went on, Bridget resigned herself to the chronic pain until the day it vanished in an instant. Bridget Riley lived with pain in her right shoulder for 15 years. It was pretty chronic and there would be times when it would flare and become really extreme to the point that I couldn't sleep. The pain started years after she injured her shoulder in a car accident. At first, she tried to manage it on her own. When I would um, have the pain or notice it getting too extreme, I would either just really take it easy with um, working out or with my day-to-day -day activity and um, kind of baby my shoulder to the point that um, I would sometimes have to forego even playing with my son. I think maybe I was minimizing the fact that I was in that much pain and that it really was hampering my life. And so I think I had just grown used to being in, in regular pain. As the pain got worse, she sought the help of a chiropractor, but that offered only temporary relief. There were definitely nights where I didn't sleep. Um, you know, it was very restless and I would wake up the next day just really exhausted because the pain was just too much. Then one day, she turned on the 700 Club. If there's someone with a right shoulder, you've just uh, felt it go through, uh, the healing touch of God go through that shoulder. You've been in pain for years. God is restoring it now in Jesus' name, deep within that joint. What you couldn't do before, do it now and receive your healing. I moved my shoulder and as I moved it, I heard a large or a loud popping sound. And from that moment on, my shoulder has felt fabulous, fantastic. I can't even describe the moment of sheer awe and gratitude that God um, would heal me. Bridget has been pain free ever since. Just so thankful that I could do normal things, knowing that I'll just be able to live a normal life without out feeling like um, there's a burning sensation in my shoulder. Bridget encourages others to trust God for healing. He is a healer of both physical and spiritual and so thankful for all the healing in my life. If we faithfully keep um, coming to him, he wants that deep relationship and he wants to heal all of those areas of our life, whether it's physical or spiritual, he is definitely my healer. You know, so many times when people share their healing stories, they're moved to tears because they realize what a father God is to them, how much he cares for them. And he does for you too at your point of need. So we want to pray for you today and further encourage your faith. Pat, this is Betty from Naylor, Missouri, who developed a knot in her neck. It was uncomfortable. She had it for months. She saw two doctors. Neither one was able to help her. After more time passed, she made an appointment to see a third doctor. While waiting for the doctor visit, she was watching this program, and Pat, you gave this word of knowledge. Somebody has a swelling in your throat. Just reach up there and touch your throat right now in the name of Jesus. She touched the knot in her neck, and within a short while, it completely vanished. Three doctors. But it was something in her throat. That's interesting, yeah. but it was a cause of knot. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know Betty, but God knew her. Here's Linda. Linda lives in Amarillo, Texas. She had surgery on her left knee. She was still found it hard to rise when she was sitting. Okay, then uh, last September, she was watching this program, and Terry, you gave this word, quote, your knee pops in and out all the time. 
Uh, it's quite painful. God is completely healing you of that. It's not going to happen again. Linda said, that's me. And all traces of pain left after nearly five months. She called and said, look, I don't have any more pain, Please. and I'm free. So, folks, you say, well, how does all this happen? <laughs> how does it work? Well, it's not working. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. He is uh, in our hearts. He's in our lives. He's in our society. He's everywhere. And when we call upon Him, that power that is there everywhere just is mobilized at an instant and bang. It touches that place where we agree God's Spirit comes and works because He's everywhere. He's in everything. So it's not that He's way up there. He's way down there. He's there with us. Right now as I'm talking to you, God is here. Jesus Christ is here. And what He wants us to do is to open our eyes and receive what He's going to do. Now, what do you have? You've had something so bad you say, well, God will never heal me. Well, yes, He will. You say, oh, God can't take care of that. I owe too much money. He can't pay that debt. Why can't He? The cattle on a thousand hills, the gold and silver are all His. He can do anything He wants to. You say, well, He can't take care of my husband. You don't know how nasty He is. Well, God knows, and God can take care of a man, a woman, a family, a child, everything. Now, look, Terry and I are going to join together right now. And we're going to believe God, and I'm going to ask you to pray with us. Father, we know you're here. We know you're in this room. We know that you're between us and those in the audience, that you're drawing us together. And Terry and I, with love in our hearts to all of the people, are joining together. And we're saying, touch them, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, give life where there's death and revitalize cells, cells that have died. May they come alive in the name of Jesus. And may spiritual energy flow into your being from this moment on in Jesus' name. And by the way, somebody, you've got a terrible headache. Put your hand right now on your forehead in the name of Jesus. Touch. Terry. Someone else, you have a problem with, the, um, with your vertebrae up near your brain stem, actually, and just these incredible pains that go down your back from time to time. God is healing that for you right now. All of those impulses and things that need to connect are connecting, and you're going to be set Thank free you. from that, though you've had it for a long time. Someone else, you have a problem with your with your um, like pelvic girdle. like mm. It's out of alignment. I don't know if you had an accident or what it is, but you can't walk straight because of it. But you can now. Get up and do what you couldn't do before. God's just healed you. Oh, There's like a dark cloud over somebody. You, you just have this awful fear. You have this terrible fear. Perfect love casts out fear, for fear has torment. In the name of Jesus, that fear is gone. I bind the spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus, loose them. And may the anointing of the Holy Spirit fill you with joy and praise from this moment on. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you are, begin to praise God and receive what God is doing. Let the power of God flow into your life. He's real. Read what the Bible says. It's real. Terry. It is real. It's Amen. pretty wonderful. <laughs> well, still ahead, meet a husband and wife with a safari in their own backyard. You can uh, take a walk around the property and, and see the Impala. It's like an animal parade every evening. See how this couple is investing in their retirement years later on today's 700 Club. And welcome back to the 700 Club. Germany is pushing through some new measures to address its massive migrant crisis. The legislation would speed up the way migrants are handled and cut down on their numbers. And it would make it easier to deport foreigners who commit crimes. The crackdown comes after a rash of thefts and sexual assaults on women in the city of Cologne on New Year's Eve. Those attacks have been mostly linked to foreigners.
Iran has taken another American hostage despite the U.S. nuclear deal that gave big concessions to Iran's hardline Islamic regime. This time, it's an 80-year-old man with joint U.S.-Iranian citizenship. His son is also being held captive by the regime in Tehran's Evin prison. The family's lawyer says the son faces accusations of, quote, cooperation with the hostile government of the United States. And you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. The worldwide red carpet premiere of the movie Miracles from Heaven, starring Jennifer Garner and Queen Latifah, is going to be taking place in Los Angeles on March the 9th. You can win a four-night trip for two to this gala event. Just sign up at cbn.com slash miracles from heaven. The contest ends at midnight tonight. And the winner will be announced on Tuesday's 700 Club. So you've got just a few hours left to do this. Go to cbn.com slash miracles from heaven and sign up for your chance to win. That would be a lot of fun. I think it would, and it's a free trip. So that's uh, <laughs> something we'd be glad to do for you. Paul and Mickey Prince are retired, but they're still working full time and loving it. Take a look. Paul and Mickey Prince live in South Africa where they've got a safari right in their own backyard. You can uh, take a walk around the property and, and see the Impala. It's like an animal parade every evening. After successful careers with the military and the post office, the princes retired and moved to South Africa to help poor children. These were children that had scars on their bellies from dumpster diving. And we asked ourselves the question, uh, if not us, why not us? It's the same question they asked themselves when they started watching the 700 Club in South Africa. We just love what you guys do. You know, you're all over the world. You're doing the water wells and the children and the surgeries. And we're doing our little thing in our corner, but, you know, we just want to help other people also. We knew that the more you try to bless, the more you are blessed. So the couple became CBN partners. And right away, their own ministry was flooded with donations. One was for $10,000. When I saw the email and all the zeros, I about fell over. Well, we knew that you can't outgive God. The princes also joined the Superbook DVD Club and now show Superbook to the 23 children under their care. They sit and they're very, very wrapped in attention watching Superbook, you know. And then at the end, they're all singing along with the salvation song. It just blesses our socks off. <laughs> to catch the same joy Paul and Mickey have, they say, give freely and trust God completely. You gotta put God first, you know, test Him. You either trusting yourself or you're trusting Jesus. So just a simple thing to do with your finances is say, here, I trust you, Jesus and watch what God will do in your life. Isn't that a wonderful type of retirement? They're not exactly uh, it'll, uh, indolent that they're working hard, but they're so-called retired. Uh, if you want to participate, and we'd love you to do that, the 700 Club is an easy uh, decision. 65 cents a day, that's not a whole lot of money. It's uh, about a third of the price of a, a can of soda pop. Uh, we'll send you something called Heaven. It's a DVD that's uh, on our feature that you want to have and about how great Heaven is. And uh, I want you to call in and say, look, you can count on me. Help us to help people like Terry and his wife. Uh, let's see what we can do. What well, do you this got? is Doris. She lives in Bradenton, Florida, Pat. She's watched the Heaven, what God has prepared for those who love Him. She said, my one and only child, a son, age 58, recently died. He was born again, and I know he's in heaven. But your Heaven DVD was so wonderful and encouraging. It really touched my heart. Thank you. So a blessing you know, to Doris, and it will be to you as well. We're all going there one of these days. That's where we hope. Paul talked about the blessed hope, the coming of the Lord Jesus. We believe that uh, those of us who die will rise again, meet the Lord in the air, our bodies will be added to our spirits, will be transformed, and we'll be like Him, for we'll see Him like He is. It's a glorious thing, and there'll be no pain, no suffering, no heartache, no grief. We'll be uh, 
in, surrounded by ineffable love, love that has, you cannot conceive of. Mm -hmm. And everything that's on this earth, all the pain and the suffering will be long gone. That's what God is planning for them that love Him. And Jesus said, now, come, blessed of my Father, enter into the kingdom which was prepared for me for you by, before the foundation of the earth. So God's already got it ready. Yeah. yeah. You know what's so exciting about the DVD is you have people on there sharing their stories, people who have died and, and, and seen, gone and had right. a heaven experience conffirming what yeah. all those promises Amen. in the Bible have to say. So it's pretty, pretty wonderful okay. to hear well, all of that. Okay. It's going to be great. All right. What do yep. you have? Still yeah. ahead, we've got your email questions. Ray asks, if a couple divorces, are they guilty of adultery if they choose to marry someone else? Pat's going to handle this hot potato and more after this. Well, if you're like most parents, you're concerned about what your children are exposed to online, especially younger children. Here's some good news about a safe site for kids from our Emmy-winning series, Digital Download. Well, hey, you're watching Digital Download. I'm Caleb Kinchlow. It's time to meet the Marks. This family of eight is always on the move, surfing their way through countries around the world. And at the age of 11, the middle son, Zach, wanted to keep in touch with people he met at surfing competitions. So naturally, he created a Facebook page. But his dad was concerned for his son's safety and thought Zach was too young to be on the site. Well, Zach disagreed. What happened next? Uh, there was no place for uh, kids like me to go that been kicked off Facebook before by their parents, so I decided to create one. Yeah, you definitely heard him right. At the age of 11, he created his own social networking site, and it's called Grom Social. Grom actually comes from Australia, and it's uh, like a young surf term. Um, it's actually a promising young individual that is quick to learn. I want to just say that, that we're big fans of Facebook for adults. But when it comes to the kid market, uh, there's no one watching. There's no one monitoring. We just felt that you know he wasn't ready to be exposed to that kind of stuff. We wanted to keep him young still. Now the site has gone from a couple hundred users to 1.2 million. So here's how it works. Kids log on using a parent or teacher's email. Now once they sign up, they create a grommetar, start exploring, playing games, and connecting with people. But it's not just anyone. Every keystroke is monitored 24-7 and parents can track their kids' activity. We checked out the verification process and yeah, trust me, it's secure. So, what's next for the Marx family and Grom Social? We are currently working on a project that's going to allow us to have a Christian-based part of Grom Social. Zach also had this advice for young entrepreneurs. We have a goal and don't let anything get in your way. Focus on what you're doing um, and don't let anything stop you from what you want to do. Um, that was kind of my motivation creating Grom Social. I'm Caleb Kinchlow, and this has been Digital Download. We'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Stay with us. We're ready to bring it on with your email questions. And Pat, this first one is from Ray, who says, if a couple divorces, are they guilty of adultery if they choose to marry someone else? Now, Ray, I can give you my opinion. Or I can tell you what Jesus said. And I think he would prefer what Jesus said to what I might tell you. But here's the deal. He said, look, uh, in the beginning it wasn't so. He said, for this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and uh, they shall be one flesh. And what God has joined together, let not man put us under. Now he said, if anybody divorces his wife or a wife divorces her husband, for any cause except fornication or, you know, adultery or whatever, um, and goes and marries somebody else, they are guilty of adultery. That's what the Lord said. Now, the church, I suppose, could change that, but they haven't. And that's the rule. Now, if there's adultery or the Pauline privilege, which is desertion, 
or if there's such extreme cruelty that it, it's tantamount to a desertion, there are a few little things along the way. But just, I don't like her. She's not as pretty as I thought she ought to be. And I want another one. I want a cute young girl instead of the old lady I'm married to. <laughs> it doesn't cut it. So that, that's the rule, okay? This is Sarah Pat who says, I work with a lady who smokes like a chimney. She earns as much as I do, but never has any money. My friend and I share our lunch with this coworker. I help her out with money for her drinks at work. She's always saying she's broke. Is it wrong to give money to people who spend their extra money on cigarettes instead of food for their lunch? <laughs> um, you're, you're an enabler, and I think what you ought to do is sit down with that woman and say, look, honey, uh, a pack of cigarettes is costing you five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars, ten dollars, whatever it costs, and uh, you're doing that every day. So that's two or three hundred dollars a month. Uh, you got to get kick the habit. Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Okay. This is Debbie who says I watched your DVD Heaven and truly enjoyed it. I've always had a question about heaven. The Bible says there's no pain or sorrow in heaven, but do people miss their loved ones who they leave behind? I think you're so much in the presence of God. There's such ecstasy at His presence mm -hmm. as a spiritual being that uh, the old has uh, gone away and all has become new. And you're enveloped in this ecstasy of, of joy in the presence of the Lord. So I, I think the idea that you're sad about what happened before, I, I, there's no sorrow, no sadness. And I think that's what the Bible means. Well, look, that's all the time we've got for this show. We leave you with today's Power Minute from Psalm 84. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Tomorrow, reporter Chuck Holton takes us to the front lines of the fight against ISIS. For all of us, this is Pat Robertson, for Terry and Wendy and all the team. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye. God bless you.